This is Sound Noise Acoustics Engineering Podcast, episode number five, brought to you by Sound Solutions, an independent acoustical consulting firm at ssacoustical.com. My goal is to provide you with knowledge and resources to address acoustical issues. I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I want to discuss environmental noise projects. I will use cell towers as an example because we've had a lot of these projects in the last couple of the in the last couple of years, but these principles and methodology apply for a variety of environmental noise projects. The primary primary noise sources at a cell tower are the air conditioning units and the generators. The air conditioning units kick on their external to the uh, equipment that's on the ground in in a uh, an enclosure and some kind of housing there. There's uh, external air conditioning units that keep the temperatures whatever they need to be for that equipment. And then generators generally need to be exercised or operated once a week for about an hour. And they kick on in emergencies when there's power outages. But that's specific to cell towers. We're dealing with just environmental projects in general. You'll follow the same process. We usually visit the site to evaluate the conditions as they pertain to sound propagation, so you get an idea of are there hills, are there trees, are there, is it grass, or is it concrete between the noise source and the, the noise sensitive receivers. And you're looking at what other noise sources are out there at the same time, and you measure, usually measuring the existing noise and not measuring where the noise is being generated, but at the noise-sensitive receivers around. So the closest homes, residences, parks, schools, churches, um, places, hospitals, or places where there could be a concern for excess noise. And so you measure there, usually during the periods where your noise source could be operating. So in the case of a cell tower, for the generator noise, we're worried about Saturday morning when they exercise it. When the AC units uh, are a concern, mostly daytime in Arizona, anytime. So we're, we are concerned with nighttime noise levels uh, as well as daytime. So we'd want to get a sampling uh, of those. Now, some regulations won't require that you visit the site and make existing noise, regula er, existing noise measurements but it's usually helpful so that you know what the environment is. Is it a very quiet environment um, where these noise regulations might not protect that quiet, quiet environment? Um, usually it's, it's nice to see the site and make some measurements. Then evaluate what the noise regulations are. And in some states, this is really easy. You have a state regulation, Denver, Oregon, Massachusetts. You just pick the take the regulation you follow what it says all right here's the daytime limit here's the nighttime limit we see what our noise source is going to generate and we're see if we need to provide noise mitigation and sometimes in a lot of states there is no state noise regulation so you have to uh, look to see if there's a city or county regulation and deal with that um, so Sometimes you need to measure at an existing facility. So let's say they're proposing to put in a cell tower, but there's nothing there right now. We go out and measure what the existing noise is, and then we could go to a similar one, measure what its noise level is at some known distance, at 50 feet, 25 feet. And that distance depends on what are the background noise levels, because you want to just measure from that noise source. You don't want to be half mile away measuring traffic noise as well as the generator, you'd like to get just a measurement of that noise source so that you can plop that noise source in your new environment and, and see what the levels from that noise source will be. Um, but you do want it far enough away that you're not just in this near field where you're not just measuring close to one AC unit, air conditioning unit, where you're far enough away where you're getting contributions from all of them and where you can easily move that distance further away and get reasonable predictions. Um, 
you model the noise. Now, there could, it could be an existing facility that someone just wants to know, is it in compliance? You just measure, you're done. There's no predictions involved. Sometimes they're making changes, adding something, and maybe it's a new facility altogether. And so if there's changes or something new, you're going to have to do some predictions. And I'll discuss predictions in the future. I'm not going to go into predictions right now, but you'll just project, all right, here's the noise source for my either reference library of things I've measured in the past or, or that are in a book of reference levels or that I go out and measure and I see, oh, here's what a low store sounds like and here are the noise sources in the levels at, at different distances and then you put them together for your prediction. Um, and then if needed, if those predicted noise levels or the measure that you measured exceed the regulations, then you have to provide noise mitigation or noise reduction options. Um, maybe you go out and measure after those noise mitigations are in place to um, ensure that, you know, that they're in compliance, that they're within the noise levels once they've put those in. So the um, I just wanted to touch on these noise regulations. We deal with, uh, it's a challenge here in Arizona. And I know there's other states with challenges with these noise regulations. Because sometimes you'll have, you check with the city, you check with the county and see if there's a limit. And if they have a nice clear limit, you know, don't exceed a certain level during daytime and nighttime, then you move forward. But sometimes we find they have real vague limits stating, Noise can't be a nuisance or a disturbance, or that it can't be excessive or unreasonable. Um, and that, that's really hard to clearly define. We have some regulations. Uh, in Tucson, for example, there's a maximum noise limit of 70 dB. And, um, and that's great. You have this maximum threshold, but someone could be producing whatever, 65 dB day and night, and as long as they don't go above 70, they're in compliance. And that's not a, a reasonable level to long-term produce. It's not a, not a reasonable criteria. The city of Mesa had a 24-hour limit, so you can make a lot of noise during one hour, and as long as you're relatively quiet the rest of the time, stay in compliance or produce quite a bit for periods, for 10 minutes of each hour, you could, you could have very loud levels and averaged out over a 24-hour period, keep it below 60. Uh, and that, it wasn't even a day-night limit. It was just a 24-hour LEQ or average, kind of average limit. So where there's no clearly defined limits, usually what we do is look at what are the, the regulations in the vicinity. And in general, in the U.S., in general, 55 during the day, you know, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., 50 at night, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., is considered a reasonable limit for residences as the receiver. Some noise regulations, such as Massachusetts and Oregon, put in a, you can't exceed the existing by more than 10 dB. So go out and measure what's existing and your limit is the lower of 10 dB above that or these 50, 55 limits. Um, th there's a lot of other takes on that, but that's kind of a general guideline. So City of Phoenix here, you can't exceed 55, period. Uh, Marana here, it's 50 and 55, 55 during the day, 50 at night. Gilbert has 45 at night, 55 at the day. Salt Lake City, 55 and 50. Colorado has a 55-50. Oregon, they have L50s, um, kind of similar to an LEQ of 55 and 50 during the night. A little bit different, but, but about the same. Uh, and then they have that increase. Globe here in Arizona, um, you can't disturb slumber or the peace and quiet, uh, which is fun to try to meet, that criteria. Uh, Tempe is a 40 at night, 45, 45 in the evening, 40 at night, and then uh, daytime of 55. P 
Kiori has 65 during the day, 55 at night. Uh, Tucson, I told you, he has 70 during the day. And, um, well, California, there's tons of regulations. But what I do is just kind of put in a sampling, say here is kind of a guideline just in case they don't have a regulation. So as far as noise mitigation, there's a lot of options. When I'm dealing with environmental projects, especially in this case cell towers, you could do um, berms. Sorry about that. You could do barriers, berms, orient the building differently, ducting the intakes of these air conditioning units or the intake and exhaust in the of the generators. A lot of times you can go right to the manufacturer and they might have a package to put on, like for a generator. If you have some, I don't know, Cummins or some generator, they might have a silencer system that they could put on. Um, usually the generators are enclosed with openings. Those openings you could orient or put some kind of shielding on. You could put absorption inside the, the housing there. Silencers definitely for the stacks, if needed. And then the type of silencer would depend on, you know, how much noise you need to reduce. But again, you don't want to avoid any uh, guarantees or warranties. So check with the manufacturer, work with the manufacturer um, when you're coming up with your recommendations. I mean, you could come up with a list, but then uh, you do want to do some more research before just a applying. Barriers, there's a lot of options. You could do anything that's solid, you know, pretty heavy, a couple pounds per square foot. Um, all it needs to do is that transmission loss, the noise passing through the barrier, should reduce the noise by at least 10 um, 10 dB more than the noise being attenuated going over the barrier. So if you need a total of 5 dB reduction, the noise over the top of the barrier should reduce it by 5 dB. And the noise through the barrier, you want to have the, the transmission loss to be at least 15. You know, so it's something that can, that, that it's not going the noise passing through isn't gonna contribute to that noise. And if it does, then you might have to have a higher barrier. Um, there shouldn't be gaps. If there's drainage gaps, just be careful they're not facing towards your source. You don't want to leave a, a few inch gap at the bottom around the bottom of it or that will be a leak where a noise could pass through easily and, if, and not leave your barrier not very effective. Um, there can be issues with reflections. You can get barriers with absorption on the inside. Um, it could be a solid metal with absorption, perforated metal barrier. Uh, they do have those made of PVC, like a plastic. They're a little lighter. Um, you could get a treatment to concrete or if, if reflections are an issue. So if you have a barrier close to another, let's say your building's 20 feet tall or 15 feet tall, you throw a barrier to block the noise from the equipment, well, that barrier might be reflecting noise back to your wall and make the barrier not as effective as you're expecting. So absorption on the walls, on the building, can help minimize that. Um, but I, I guess the point is, you, if needed, you deal with some mitigation, relocating units, replacing units, barriers, berms. If there's enough space, you can build up a berm. Um, and and then you might have to measure again to see if you're in compliance. Um, that's that's the basic procedure for a an environmental noise project. I did want to just mention, you know, you can um, get a sound level meter. You can get a Radio Shack meter. You can get online. We have a couple links on our resource page. Even your cell phone, you can get an app. What I'd caution against is, and it can give you a ballpark, I find the cell phone, mine's really good for um, around voice levels, 60, maybe 50 to 70 range. When you get much higher, it doesn't track very well with a, with a real sound level meter. And the less expensive sound level meters, I'd recommend getting a calibrator with it. You want to be, most all these regulations are going to be DBAs. So you want to be on A weighting. 
And then it's nice to be able to calibrate, make sure it's um, not way out of line. But I've had good luck with just even inexpensive ones. We've helped clients get some uh, just that you find on Amazon for uh, under $200. And it can give you a good idea what those levels are. Um, it's not going to be, um, you know, uh, certified. You're not going to be able to use that if you have to go to a public meeting or court, but it, it'll give you a ballpark what kind of issues you're dealing with. Um, yeah, I think that is all I wanted to touch on on this episode, number four. Next episode, I'm going to talk about vibration and noise from CrossFit gyms. We've had a number of these where big guys are dropping big weights, so I'll talk about that next time. Thanks a lot for listening to the sound, noise, acoustics, engineering podcast. We provide you with knowledge and resources to address acoustical issues. I'm Bill Holiday with Sound Solutions uh, SS Acoustical. Or this is brought to you by Sound Solutions at SSAcoustical.com. As always, we, I appreciate any feedback you have. Email me, bill at ssacoustical.com. Any comments, questions, more information you'd like, be glad to respond. And at our website, we have uh, Twitter and um, Facebook links. You can communicate with us there. That'd be great. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care.